All right, so we talked today about parity, we talked about checksum, and we talked about cyclic redundancy checks. We want to talk about one more thing. Um, mo these schemes all kind of assume that you're detecting errors that happened in nature. In other words, something happened, there was a power surge, or there was some sort of weird natural event that caused an error to be introduced into the data stream. Can someone think of something more nefarious that might happen that would be another source for an error? Someone could intentionally be introducing errors. For, now, why would they want to do that? So let's say that you were going to download Ubuntu onto your computer, and you were going to use this as your operating system instead of Windows, right? So here I am on some, now this is a version of Ubuntu called Kubuntu, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to download and we're going to install this on our computer. Now, look over here. I want you to look here at this part right here. And look at this part right here. You see this crazy set of numbers? That's a giant hexadecimal number. They basically are calling it a checksum. It's not really a checksum. I guess, well, technically maybe it is. Now, this is not uh, modulo 256. This is a much bigger number. And you can see here there are different kinds of downloads here, uh, the different versions of Ubuntu. Let's just look at this one right here for a second. We're just going to look at this one right here. And they tell you if you click on this blue part right here, you can download the packets onto your machine. And then they give you this thing which is known as a hash code. Here they're calling it a checksum, but most people in America would call it a hash code. And what I want to know is, does anybody know why they're giving you that? That's very good. So one of the problems that you run into uh, in cybersecurity is that while you're downloading this packet from Sweden or wherever this is, someone could intercept the data, keep it, but then add on some viruses, and then present it to you, and you think that you're just downloading this, but you're actually downloading this plus all the viruses. You can see how that could happen, right? So the question is, is there any way you could verify that the stuff that you're downloading is actually what the site in Sweden is sending you, and that it hasn't been tampered with in any way? When I'm talking about tampering, I'm not talking about natural errors that have been caused by power surges or the other methods we discussed. I'm talking about a malicious person that has intentionally added code, right, which is a virus that you don't know about and you think you're just downloading Ubuntu, but you're getting much more than you bargained for. And what this hash code does is it basically makes sure that what you got is what was intended to be sent. And here's the way it works. It doesn't use the simple checksum algorithm or the CRC algorithm. It uses something instead called cryptographic hashing. And what's happening here is that all the information in this file is passed through a cryptographic hash, probably some SHA hash, and it generates a giant hash code. And this is it right here. And so what's happening is when you download the code into the machine, before you install it, excuse me, before you install it, you want to take the downloaded version and calculate the hash yourself and make sure that the hash that you come up with does what? You want to make sure that it matches the hash that's being given here. Now there's a subtlety here that I need to explain and then I promise that I'm done lecturing for the day. Okay, let's say I'm a hacker. Let's say I'm a hacker. And I go to this page and I say, oh, Darn it, they've got a hash code here. Now, let's say that I've got the packets that are uh, going to be sent. These are the packets here, right? And let's say that I've got my little virus right here, right? I'm going to package them together. The problem I'm running into now is that when you hash this combination of files, the hash doesn't match anymore, right? That's the whole point of the hash. Is it possible for me as the hacker to also add in some other stuff that's not really part of the virus, but the idea here is that now when I put all three of them together, the hash code will now match. Please discuss with your partner what is to prevent a hacker from doing this, where they take the virus and then they just add in some more bits because they've got to make the hash match, right, to fool the, 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 uh, the clients. Please discuss with your partner 
Is this possible to do? So the way the hash function works for cryptographic hashing is that you take the input, you generate some output here. It's really hard to figure out what input generates what output. It's really, really hard. The, the hash function is built to be a one-way function. So if you give it some input, you put it through the machine, it gives it the output. But if I gave you an output and said what input is needed to create that output, that's nearly impossible to do. That's the whole point of the hash algorithm. So therefore, there's no way the hacker can know what to put into this green packet to make it come out so that the overall thing generates that hash code. And that's where the security comes from. Okay, I know that that was a tough lecture. Uh, it's not really germane to data structures per se, but the hashing uh, principles are important.